A lot to be thankful for. Amen. A lot to be thankful for. Take your Bibles. Genesis chapter 12 and Matthew chapter 1. Genesis chapter 12 and Matthew chapter 1. And we'll see what the Lord has for us today. Genesis chapter 12, you find God calling Abraham out of the Ur of the Chaldees and uh, the beginning of that nation, the nation of Israel, all the promises made. And God starts out by blessing Abraham. And we'll just read that. And then we'll go to Matthew chapter 1. But Genesis chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. God was going to bless Abraham, and through that blessing to him, others were going to receive that blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That was some blessing. Obviously, it's the chosen seed. It was the Christ, and it would come down through that line. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. Matthew chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. This is the genealogy of our Lord. And it said, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac. Here's the genealogy. And Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren, and it goes on and on and on. But that's where the Christ came from, the promised seed. And uh, that's such a blessing when you study the Bible and go through all of those names and see the circumstances. Many, many times the devil tried to put that seed out. One of the most well-remembered is when Herod had all the children under two years old killed because the wise men said that Christ was going to be born in Bethlehem. He wanted to kill all the babies. There are Old Testament illustrations of that too. But guess what? God wins. Amen? God always wins. And God has a purpose and a plan, and that will come to pass. But let's bow our heads and ask God's blessing. Father, thank you that we can ask that today. Thank you that you want to bless this assembly today and your word. And God, you want to strengthen and help us. And I pray that you would do that now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to talk today about the purpose of the blessing. And we all are blessed. If you think about that, there's one blessing after another. Psalm 118, 26. We have blessed you out of the house of God. When you come to church, it's a blessing. Amen. This is the house of God, and people come together, and we fellowship, and we sing, and we pray, and the Spirit of the Lord is here, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, and so just go on and on and on. It's just a wonderful thing to do. We sang, make me a blessing. That's a prayer. So we ask God to make us a blessing. Uh, we sang, count your blessings. That's good, because it reminds you of how good God has been to you. And then Ezekiel 34, 26, there shall be showers of blessings. Everybody gets wet. Amen? That's the way it ought to be when you come to church. Everybody gets blessed by the Word of God and the presence of God. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. It's not an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It's blessing. And so we bless those and pray for those that despitefully use us. We have a definition of blessed or blessed. That is enjoying spiritual happiness and the favor of God, enjoying heavenly joy. That's what it is. It's such a blessing to do that. Boy, my uh, sinuses are bothering me. Uh, Paul, could you just give me this mic? We just go to that mic. Are we on? This one's off? No? Okay, they're both on. Is that off now? Mine's off? This on? Is it on? Got it. No? Okay. 
Okay, we'll just... <clears throat> that was exciting, wasn't it? Okay, okay, we'll see. Blessed means enjoying spiritual happiness. There's something that God has done for us that we enjoy. It makes us happy. Amen? It's not just something here, but it's something that God has done for us. A blessing is a wish of happiness pronounced. It's a prayer imploring happiness for another. Abraham was blessed, and so he was a blessing to other people. So God did something for Abraham, and through Abraham, God did something for everybody else. We are vessels, we are channels, and God does that with us. Deuteronomy 33, 1, uh, the Bible says, And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Next chapter, Joshua chapter 1. Joshua takes the children of Israel into the promised land. This Deuteronomy chapter 33 Moses is giving a blessing to the nation of Israel. And he goes down through all the tribes and he blesses them. Uh, Genesis chapter 49, Jacob did the same thing, but it wasn't all blessing. Remember he said, Reuben, the firstborn, you're unstable as water, you won't excel. Simeon and Levi, you're instruments of cruelty. And it was called, I heard one preacher say, Jacob's judgment seat. And so he went down through all the tribes and it was, it was more condemnation and here's Moses, more encouragement. And so he's giving, it's called a blessing. I think that's what a blessing is. It's encouraging to us. We have Luke chapter 10 and verse 6. Jesus told his disciples, when you go into a, a city, go to a house. And he said, "Ask, say, peace be to this house. And verse 6 says, and if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. And if not, it shall turn to you again. But God's intention was to take peace to that house. He wanted peace in that house, so he sent his disciples there. Not every house has that kind of spiritual peace. Ephesians 1, 3, we've talked about this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So it's not just, I can pay my rent, I've got a car, we can eat today, you know, our health is good, all of those physical things that we would count blessings, but it's spiritual blessings. And we'll look at that because God pours those out on us. First Chronicles 13, 14, the ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months, and the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. Remember, the ark of God was taken. Uh, Eli was the high priest. He had two sons that were corrupt, and the Philistines fought against them, and the wife of one of the sons, uh, of course, survived, uh, but Eli was gone, her son was killed, and the enemy now has taken the Ark of God. And because the Ark was taken, she named the child that she was going to give birth to Ichabod, uh, which means the glory has departed. And so that ark was taken. It was put into the temple of the Philistines. Dagon was their god. But eventually, Israel got it back. And uh, they found out that they put it on a new cart and they were bringing it. And there was a man by the name of Uzzah. Do you remember the story? And the cart shook. And he was afraid that the ark would fall off. And so he went to steady it. And he was killed. Because the ark should have been carried by the Levites. That's who was supposed to carry them. And so that was a violation, and anyway, this man died. And so they put the ark of God in the house of Obed-Edom for three months, and everything was blessed. And it's a picture of the presence of the Lord in our house. Peace, we just talked about that with the disciples. Joy, uh, blessing, all that comes from the Lord being in our house. Christ is the head of the home the unseen guest of every meal, the silent listener to every conversation. We had that plaque up in our room when I was growing up, and I don't think my brother and I ever paid any attention to it. Uh, we certainly didn't follow those instructions. But uh, isn't it a blessing that he's in your home? Isn't it a blessing that you feel his presence there, his peace there? I mean, it's such a, such a wonderful thing. Genesis chapter 39, Joseph is sold into slavery by his brothers. He ends up in Egypt at Potiphar's house. 
And Potiphar just is amazed because Joseph being his servant, everything in the house is blessed. Here's the, here's the verse, verse 5. It came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house that, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house and in his field. This man's house, his business, his material possessions, everything was blessed because of Joseph. It wasn't what he was doing. It was what Joseph had done. And so that's what happens. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Think about it. Are you blessed? Well, God wants to take your blessing and bless somebody else. Amen? He doesn't just give us blessings. He wants us to be a blessing to other people. That is the purpose of the blessing. So if you've been blessed spiritually, we all know what that means physically. Amen? Uh, okay, you know, I'm blessed financially. I can help this person. I'm blessed physically. I can carry boxes for this person. I'm blessed in this way. And so we give a material or we give a, uh, our, our services but something that's more important than that is the spiritual blessing. Same principle. God wants us to take the blessing that we have and share it with others. And so, I mean, there's so many of these spiritual blessings. Peace, joy, comfort, kindness. These are all spiritual blessings. And we share those with other people. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. Psalm 68, blessed be the Lord who daily load us, loadeth us with benefits, and then our cup runs over, and that's a blessing. So, are you a blessing spiritually? Are you a blessing to someone else, or do you want to be a blessing? Get up in the morning and say, who can I be a blessing to today? Amen? Uh, and so God gives us, and we give to other people, not just out here materially, but spiritually we do that. Acts chapter 20, Paul is in uh, uh, Ephesus, and he's speaking to the Ephesian elders, and he says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring, you ought to support the weak, to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. We come to church, we receive a blessing from God. We're obedient to God. Amen. He, he ministers to us. And then we leave this place and we share that blessing with those that were unable to be here for whatever reason. Um, forgiveness, comfort, mercy, long-suffering, kindness. And let me mention this one, wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Our advice, our input in somebody else's life is a great blessing if it's from the Lord. Amen. If God gives me wisdom and I share that wisdom with someone else, that is God's blessing by opening my understanding and God's blessing opening somebody else's understanding. In the area of salvation, it's critical. Amen. But it's so important. There's a story back in 1 Samuel 25. Na David is running from Saul. Saul is the king. Saul wants to kill David. David was such an honorable man. He had opportunity to take Saul's life, but he never would. And so David is, has sent his soldiers, his men, to Nabal's house. He's a very wealthy man, and they just wanted some provision. They just wanted some food. And Nabal was really harsh with those servants. And he says, who is David? He's just a man who's left his master and was very critical. The men came back and gave that message to David, and David said, everybody put on your sword. Let's go kill Nabal and we'll just take what we want. You know, it doesn't have to be a gift. And so they're on their way to kill Nabal. And uh, Abigail, Nabal's uh, wife, comes out to meet David and, and she says, uh, don't do this. Please don't do this. this. And you have to read the chapter. I don't want to take the time to read the whole chapter. But it, it, she says, that would be the wrong thing to do, and the Lord wouldn't bless that, and that would be something that would stain your reputation for a long, long time. And so David said this to her, Blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with mine own hand. Nabal was a, 
ungovernable man. And he, you couldn't talk to him. That's what it says in that chapter. And so Abigail came and said, David, you just don't want to do this. And he says, blessed be thy advice. Did you ever have somebody give you advice? You were on your way to do something wrong or say the wrong thing or maybe your anger. Amen. My wife and I will be driving in the car and, you know, there's bad drivers. Did anybody ever see the movie with, um, oh, what was the guy's name? Uh, anyway, an old comedian. And he always said, my little chickadee. What, what, anybody remember who that is? Uh, it's almost there, right? No, not Jimmy Durante, no. <laughs> anyway, he went out and he, he inherited all this money. And he called bad drivers road hogs. And this was back in a day where there was no car insurance. And so he inherited all this money and he went to a used car dealer and he bought all the cars. And he hired the drivers and he was in the first car and then all these drivers were behind him. And whenever he saw a road hog, he'd run him right off the road and then get in the next car. Makes sense, right? You know, I don't know if you ever feel like that, but my wife and I will be driving and I get upset about a driver. Maybe you've never gotten upset about a driver, but I have. And she'll be a word of comfort to me. Amen? A good advice. And uh, yes, sir. W.C. Fields. Fields, that's the one. They're very good. And, uh, but get that movie. It's called Road Hogs. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. Anyway, uh, I don't know why. Blessed be thy advice. Amen. And there's safety in the multitude of counselors. There's sin in the multitude of words, but there's safety in the multitude of counselors. In Matthew 5, verse 9, blessed be the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed be thy advice. How do you make peace? How do you make war? Right here. Right here. The tongue is set on fire of hell. You can say something and you can influence somebody else and talk about something, or you can be a peacemaker. Amen? Good thing to think about. Um, salvation is the greatest blessing of all because that's peace with God because of the peace of God. In Acts chapter 15, verse 26, there are men that have hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're in church today. Somebody built the church, had a part in it, but you go back further than that and keep going back. And there are people, when you get to the book of Acts, they gave their very lives so we could have this privilege today to open the Bible and to worship God. The gift of eternal life is a real blessing. It's an unspeakable gift. I don't think there's any greater gift. I don't think there's any greater blessing to receive or give. And when we receive a gift like that, we want to share it with everybody else. Turn to Matthew 18. You're, you're probably still in Matthew 1. So we'll read some verses here. Matthew 18. Remember, God gives us something, a blessing, so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Amen? That's the purpose of the blessing. So wherever God blesses you, you just want to bless somebody else. I think they call it paying it forward. Amen? And it's a, it's a Bible principle. So we look at how to do that materially, physically, circumstantially. But the point of the message today is to do that spiritually. Because the spiritual blessings are so much greater than the physical blessings. Amen? And God has done so much for each one of us. This is a familiar story. The Bible says, let's see, let's begin Matthew 18, verse 21. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought uh, unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. For as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had in payment to be made. That is pretty drastic. I mean, that's, that's the end of the world right there, Right? I can't pay it. There's no way. My wife's gone. My children are gone. I'm going to be in prison, debtor's prison, for the rest of my life. My life is over. And he says, the servant therefore fell down and worshiped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Now, what do you think that guy's going to think? 
I think he's going to be pretty happy. Amen? That's more than a free meal at Cracker Barrel. This is, this is a whole restored life. It's a debt forgiven that will never be called upon again. It's not going to affect your family or you. It's just, it's a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Amen? Hip, hip, hooray. And this is the Word of God. This is the Bible. Yeah, hip, hip, hooray. The good guys win. Amen? Verse 28. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. Real minimal. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Word for word, what he just asked for. Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Different response. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what, what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his, Lord, uh, then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest thou not also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Yes. Why is it so hard? Why is that so hard? Remember, gratitude, uh, when it dies on the altar of a man's heart, that man is well nigh hopeless. And so we're to remember our benefits. We're to thank God how he loads us with benefits every day. And so we help people. We pray for people. We're kind to people. We forgive people. We have pity on people. Because God did that for us. Amen? Aren't you glad he forgave you? You know, all of us, we're just sinners saved by grace. Nobody here is perfect. Ever will be. Ever will be. All of our past, we don't even want to talk about it. Our thought life, we don't even want to talk about it. And God forgives us over and over and over and over. And yet, we have a hard time with somebody else's little offense. God wants us to recognize the blessing so that we can share that blessing with somebody else. That's the purpose of the blessing. 1 Timothy 1, 3, 13, Paul, who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. Thank God for Stephen. Thank God for Stephen. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. You know? And Paul said that later on. In Acts chapter 12, Barnabas and Saul, and it put Barnabas before Saul. This is going to be the apostle Paul. He's Saul of Tarsus now. But Barnabas and Saul go out, and Barnabas' name, his name is before uh, Saul's name. And, but that changes after he becomes Apostle Paul, then it's Paul and Barnabas. Anyway, Acts 12, 25. Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. John Mark's going to go with us. And John Mark is going to be a part of our missionary endeavor. So you come to Acts chapter 13. Verse 13, now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. John quit. So here's John and Barnabas, and they go with Paul, and there's a missionary journey. Great things were done, but John Mark got afraid and other reasons, and he quit, and he went back home. That's chapter 13. Chapter 15, Paul and Barnabas are going to go out again on another missionary journey. And Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul said, no, we're not taking him. He quit last time. He's not coming with, there's no second chance here. And so Paul chose Silas, and Barnabas took John Mark. They both had profitable ministries. And at the end of Paul's life, this is the point, 2 Timothy 4.11, only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Paul said that to Timothy. Paul said, John Mark is profitable to me for the ministry. You know what Barnabas means? Do you know what his name means? Son of consolation. And God used Barnabas in John Mark's life, and God used Paul in Silas's life. But no matter the mistakes, no matter the quits, no matter what you said or what you did, there's forgiveness for that. Amen. There's restoration for that. You can be used of God at any point that you want to if you just recognize his blessing to you because he's been good to us. Boy, there's so much 
Thank God for Barnabas. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. He's writing to the church at Corinth. A lot of wickedness there, and he names it in the previous verses. But he says, now you're forgiven. You are forgiven. Thank God for Paul's message. Amen? It's a good message. Proverbs 24, 17. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Now, why is that so hard? Oh, yeah, I hope you get it in the neck. You know, or revenge. Revenge is not only the Lord's, it's mine. Or I'm going to treat you like you're treating me. And God says, don't ever do that. And if thine enemy fall, don't rejoice in that. That can really ruin your spirit. Amen? Because malice is ill will, and we're to put that away. It's hard to do sometimes, isn't it? Might be hard to do all the time. But it's a Bible principle. And when we see that God forgave us of something much greater, then we ought to forgive those who trespass against us. Ecclesiastes 4.10, If they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. If thine enemy falleth, he doesn't have anybody to help him up. And if he's alone when he falleth, there's, that's it. Remember the story in Luke chapter 10 about the Good Samaritan? And the Good Samaritan went where he was. He's half dead, he's naked, he's been robbed of everything, and that Good Samaritan put him on his beast, took him to an inn, paid his way, and said, if he costs any more money, when I come back through here, I'll pay the innkeeper. That's a principle. And Jesus said, go and do thou likewise. Jesus said that. Amen? Well, I don't like the message. It's God's message. Amen? And when we, like last week, we need to show that love. We need to show that, that care one for another. Because that's so important for the Lord and for his church. Uh, back to Abraham, and I'll make this lengthy. Or if you were paying attention. Anyway, I'll make this short. Back to Abraham. Lot, I read that one verse in Genesis chapter 12 where God has called Abraham out and he takes Lot with him. That's his nephew. And uh, you, if you know the story of Lot, their, their herdsmen had all of this success um, materially, financially. Their herds were growing, so was Abraham's. And the herdsmen had strife one to another. And so Abraham said, Lot, look, we don't want the strife. Pick, pick any of the land that you want. You have first choice. You can have it. Go ahead. Uh, I'll just leave the rest to God. And so Lot looked toward the well-watered plains of Jordan, and that was the best business deal by far, but it was where Sodom and Gomorrah was, a bad place to go, even to be close to. Well, Lot wanted the best business deal. And so he went in that direction. And he didn't go in Sodom. He was outside of Sodom for a while. Then pretty soon he was at the gate of Sodom for a while. And then he was living in Sodom. We know that he lost his family because of the best business deal and not God's will. And we have to be careful about that. But all of a sudden now, God reveals to Abraham that Sodom's going to be destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah are going to be destroyed. And I know we've read this a number of times, but Genesis chapter 18, verse 24, Abraham says, peradventure, there's 50 righteous people inside the whole city. Just 50 righteous people. Will you spare the city? And God's not going to do that. How about 45, 40, 35, all the way down to 5? In Genesis 18, 32, and he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak yet, but this once peradventure, or I'm sorry, 10, peradventure 10 shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 10's sake. If Lot would have just got his family saved, that was 10, including him and his wife. That was 10. If only his family was saved, God would not have destroyed that city. But now God has to destroy that city. Genesis 19 and verse 16, it says, God came, 
or the, the, the messengers came, and it says, And while he lingered, Lot lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Thank God for Abraham. Abraham was praying for Lot, and those two men went into the city and took Lot by the hand. He lingered. He didn't want to go right away. And God was being merciful to him. Amen? This all becomes Abraham's prayers. Somebody prayed for you. Somebody is praying for you. Amen? People are praying for you all the time. We should pray for other people. Because that prayer, when I, when I pray for s certain people, like Bob and Judy, uh, in the middle of the night, I ask God, I said, God, help them to fill my prayers right now. And I believe that they do. I know I've felt people's prayers, and that is a great experience. Amen? So Abraham, thank God for Abraham. Thank God for David. Thank God for Barnabas. Thank God for us. Because God's blessed us, and we are a blessing. Years ago, as a young preacher, young, 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 and uh, just new in the ministry, I was asked to preach at a preacher's fellowship, and there was a number of pastors there, and I was somewhere in the middle, but there was a guy that got up to preach, and uh, he was a doctor and, you know, well respected by all the other preachers, uh, which was good. But he started to preach, and he got on, this is a long time ago, he got on hippies, long-haired hippies, and dopers, and I mean, he's just, he's just going on and on and on. And I looked at my message, and I looked back at him and heard a little more, and I looked at my message, and I said, okay, Lord, I'll preach this if you want me to. And, uh, and I was scared. I was intimidated. And all these, not all, but some preachers were amen, and you know, boy, you know, these hippies are going to ruin our land and all that kind of stuff. And I was the next pastor up. And I just got up, and I won't tell you everything I preached, but it was, it was a blessing. I tried to turn it in a different direction, and I, I called his name, and I said, I was a hippie, and I rode motorcycles, and I sold drugs, and I did drugs, and I went down through the whole list, and I said, but by God's grace... I'm called to pastor and preach the Word of God. And it just, it went in a whole different direction. Amen? And you ever look at this world, and I know the news will it'll kill you. You look at some of this stuff that's going on, and you say, man, there but for the grace of God, go we. You maybe you think, well, I would have never been like that or like that. You know, God's done so much for us. God sent that person to witness to you. God put you in that family. God gave you the mind that you have. It's not, it's your choice. It's your decision. But look at the opportunities God gave us in the past to know him and to serve him and to live for him. It's called the providence of God. Amen. The eunuch is going back from Jerusalem, back home empty, and God sends Philip there. The stories are endless, absolutely endless. I don't ever have it figured out. All I know is I'm thankful for God's grace in my life. Amen. Thankful for his grace. Uh, I thank God for the people in my life that have been a blessing to me. And you ought to, you ought to rehearse that. I'm thankful for my wife. She got saved before me. She was the instrument in my salvation. And that's a blessing, such a blessing. And I could go on and on and on. Joel chapter 2, and verse 14, the Bible says, Leave a blessing behind him. Psalm 84, 6, Who passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well. It's a dry, dry place. But we go through and we make a well there for the people that come after us. Amen? The purpose of the blessing is to be a blessing. Oh, yeah, I prayed God do this for me, and then he did. 
It shouldn't stop there. Boy, God, thank you for doing that. How can I use this blessing for somebody else? Amen. Amen. We're pilgrims on the journey of the narrow road, and those who've gone before us line the way, cheering on the faithful, encouraging the weary. Their lives a stirring testament to God's sustaining grace. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe, and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run the race not only for the prize, but for those who've gone before us, let us leave to those behind us the heritage of faithfulness passed on through godly lives. After all our hopes and dreams have come and gone and our children sift through all we've left behind, may the clues that they discover and the memories they uncover become the light that leads them to the road we each must find. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. God has blessed you. I know that. Every one of you, God has blessed you. God has blessed me. And God, what is the purpose of that? Why did God bless me? Why did God save me? Why did God put me with the people he's put with me with? Why has God given me opportunities? Why? So that I could be a blessing. Amen? That's where it needs to go. And God, that's his plan. Abraham, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to tell you why I'm going to bless you, so that all the families of the earth could be blessed. Um, I saved you, Ida. I saved you, Karen. I saved you, Deb. Why did he do that? Well, so I can go to heaven. That's not the whole picture. It's so that I can get other people to go to heaven. It's so I can be kind to other people. It's I can give godly wisdom to other people because God's given it to me. Amen? It cannot stop with us. The Red Sea, you know why it's called the Dead, Dead Sea? Or the Dead Sea? Because everything flows into it and nothing flows out. And it's filled with very valuable things, minerals and, and all those. But there's no life in it. Not the Red Sea, the Dead Sea. But there's no life in it. There's no fish in it. Nothing can live in it. I guess I've heard that you can go out there and float in it. It's got so much salt or something in it. I don't know. I don't understand everything about it. But it's called the Dead Sea because everything's flowing into it and nothing's flowing out. Our hearts are blessed when we bless others. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads, please. Father, thank you for being so good to us. There's so many that need to be blessed. So many that need a blessing today. Those in our own church, those in our own neighborhood, those on our work, just as we're traveling, just whoever you put us in touch with, Lord, may our cups run over. Bless your precious, precious word for your glory in Jesus' name.